All right, here we go. We are starting with number four. Okay, cumulative review 12. We've made it. Um, first thing with these types of problems, okay, I want to look for my um, LCD, my least common denominator. All right, um, well, before I do that, I need to factor this. I need to find two numbers. I multiply to six and add to five, x plus two, x plus three. All right, well, that tells me that my LCD is x plus 2, x plus 3. This is kind of, it's, it's similar to a, um, a uh, what is that, what am I looking for? Our common denominator, okay? So what do I do? I multiply everything by my common denominator. All right, well, this one has the x plus 2, it needs the x plus 2. This one has x plus 3, it needs x plus 2, okay? Um, this is a completely factored form, x plus 2 times x plus 3. Well, I notice that this fraction here has both, and these each only have one of them. So what am I literally doing? I'm going to show you the long route first. All right, so I'm literally multiplying this to every single term, right? Oh my gosh, this again. So I'm literally, what I'm going to do, and you may skip this step eventually, and that's totally fine, um, but this is literally what's happening. It's be what the heck? It's being multiplied to each term, okay, and only to the numerator because we're thinking about it as x plus two times x plus three over one, not x plus two times x plus three over x plus two times x plus three, okay, just over one. And I'm able to do this because I'm doing it to everything. Everything. Both sides. Everyone is involved. Isn't that exciting? That's so much fun. As I sit here and write all this stuff. I could have, let's just pause it. I shaved off a lot of time there. So, um, and you may be able to do this step in your head, but as you see here, the x plus 2s cancel out. Okay. The x, both cancel out here. And the x plus 3s cancel out there. So all I have left over my first term is x times x plus 3, that's a 3, we'll just pretend, plus, and then everything canceled out here, so all that's left over is the 2 equals, and then I have 5. And x plus. Oh, holy buckets. All right, so here I distribute my x to both. I distribute the 5 to both. All right, so I have x squared plus 3x, that is a 3, plus 2 equals 5x plus I'm going to move everything to the left side so that I can factor. So I have x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Well, how does this factor? Two numbers that multiply negative 8 and add to give me negative 2x minus 4. x plus 2. So x equals 4, and x equals negative 2. Now one of the most important parts of this problem is checking for extraneous solutions. All right, I need to check which ones work. How do I do that? I input each back into my original to see if it checks out. Okay, so I'm going to choose negative 2 first. If I look back at the original here and I plug in negative 2, I'm just going to look at the first part, negative 2 over negative 2 plus 2, plus 2 over negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2 plus 6 equals 5 over negative 2 plus 3. 
All right. Well, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. I cannot have 0 in my denominator. Therefore, negative 2 is out. So don't assume now that the 4 is going to work just because the negative 2 didn't. The, the 4 doesn't necessarily have to work. All right, so I'm going to plug in 4 now for everything. Okay, so here we go. Input 4 in for x. Negative 2 over 4 plus 2, which is 6, plus 4 squared is 16, plus 20, plus 6, 16 plus 20 is 36, plus 6 is 2 over 42, equals 5 over 7. So this, excuse me, will work out, um, it will work out. If I have a, find a common denominator, so my answer for this is 4. x equals 4. All right, I know I didn't go through and check this. All right, however, if I do, I will find that both sides are equivalent. Okay, yes. Here we go. Next one. Next one. All right, so I have a cube root of x minus 4 plus 5. Well, first thing I know is that since I have this cube root, I want to isolate my root. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides to get the cube root of x minus 4 equals negative 2. Now, some of us might think in our head, well, I, if I take a root of something, I can't get a negative. All right, but you can when I say an odd power. And our index is odd. Our index is an odd number here, therefore this negative 2 can work. Okay. To get rid of a cube root, I raise both sides to the third power. These cancel. I have x minus 4. These are inverse operations, therefore they cancel out. And negative 2 to the third is negative 8. Add 4. x equals negative 4. Got to check our solutions. Here we go. Cube root of negative 2. 4 minus 4 plus 5 equals 3. Cube root of negative 4 minus 4, that's a cube root of negative 8, which is negative 2 plus 5 equals 3. That checks out. X is negative 4. Here we go. Riveting stuff. Number 6. Holy buckets. Pick up 6. All right, here we go. So, uh, again, I have a radical here, so I want to isolate my radical. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So they have 31 minus 9x underneath my square root equals 5 minus x. Holy buckets. This is a square root. So in order to get rid of a square root, the inverse operation of a square root is a squared. So I'm going to square both sides. This drops out. I have 31 minus 9x equals, remember that 5 minus x squared is 5 minus x times 5 minus x. Okay, remember we're going to have to FOIL, so I'll get 25 minus 5x minus 5x plus x squared. Negative x times negative x gives me positive x squared. Let's do some combining and stuff. All right, 31 minus 9x equals 25 minus 10x plus x squared. Add the 9x to both sides, subtract the 31. Okay, I'm going to write this in standard form as well. I have 0. Write my x squared first, x squared. If I add the 9x, then I have minus x. If I subtract the 31, then I have minus 6. Nice 6. Okay. Factors of 6, so I have to give me negative 1. Well, I have x minus 3, of course. And x plus a deuce equals a 0. So x equals 3, 
x equals negative 2. And I'm done. Right? No. Not done. Check for extraneous solutions. Input it back into my original. 3. 3 plus the square root of 31 minus 9 times 3 equals 5. 9 times 3 is 27. 31 minus 27 gives me 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So I get 5 equals 5. Uh, what was the other one? Negative 2. Negative 2 plus the square root of 31 minus 9 times negative 2 equals 5. Um, that is negative 9 times negative 2, which is 18. 18 plus 31 is 49, so I have negative 2 plus 7. Well, again, that's 5. There it is. Equals 5, so that checks out too. So both work. Both answers. Isn't that neat? That's pretty neat. All right, I'm going to do number 7, and then they'll call it a day for this video. Here we go. All right, to get this, to do this one, to start this one, I want to subtract my two. I want to isolate my x term. Isolate my fractional exponent. Divide by negative 5. Divide by negative 5. x to the 4 over 3 equals, what do I get, 81? That's right. All right, remember, in order to, the inverse of a, Holy buckets. I'm going to get rid of our fractional exponent. To get rid of the fractional exponent, I must raise it to its reciprocal. So I have 4 over 3. So I'm going to raise both sides to 3 over 4. Okay. These will cancel. And because, because this is equivalent to the fourth root of 81 all cubed this bottom number okay this bottom number my denominator is my index the numerator is my power all right because that is true okay i get 27 but I must include a plus or minus. Whenever there is an even, what the heck is the highlighter? What are all these fancy things? Can I just get a highlighter? Dude, highlighter. Because our index, our denominator here is even, I include a plus or minus. All right, remember to include that plus or minus. Don't forget it. Can we do number eight? No, we're not going to be able to do that. All right, we'll continue with number eight on the next video. Adios.